What's up guys, it's Trevor back with another video and it is summer semester. Summertime in Columbus is excellent because winter just dragged on forever. Now that we're finally having temperatures back in the 80s and 90s, life is great. So today I just got done with a, with a histology test, first test of the semester, and I'm kind of frustrated because since we have so much time, I studied a ton and I thought I knew the information forward and backwards. And this test was so much harder than I thought it was going to be, which is frustrating because I was looking forward to getting a high A um, and being able to relax the rest of the semester and kind of ride that high A out and not put so much pressure on the final. I don't know what I got yet, but it wasn't as good as I was hoping to. I know that for sure. Um, on the test, a question would come up and I could actually remember the slide from the PowerPoint that had all the information I needed to answer the question. I just couldn't quite think of uh, the words that I needed to know to get the answer right. So it's kind of frustrating, but you have those. You have some really hard tests, and I think uh, a lot of my class thought the test was hard, so hopefully I didn't do too bad. Anyways, I'm excited that it's summer because we have a much more relaxed schedule. Um, I don't have class on Monday. Uh, can I? Oh, wait, no. We do have class on Monday. I just don't really go. Um, Fridays, we actually don't have class. So it is going to be a lot of fun. Much needed break from finals and pretty much all of last semester. So hopefully I can do really well in all my classes and get ready for a really, really tough fall semester. All right, enough complaining about what happened. The test is done. Kind of just got to live with it and wait for my grade. I'll let you guys know how that actually went. But let's get on to the video for this week. And I'm actually really excited to be making this because I've been nervous throughout this whole year that I wouldn't even be in a position to make this video. So I plan to specialize and now that my first year is done, I feel like my uh, GPA and class rank are high enough to where I, if I don't mess up, if I don't um, let my grades slip too much, I'm going to be a competitive applicant for when the time comes. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to be talking about the steps that I'm going to be taking to try and specialize. And my interest is in oral surgery right now, so oral maxillofacial surgery. And I know a lot of you guys are going to be wanting to specialize in um, endo, prosthodontics, periodontics, um, ortho. You know, there's a ton of other things, and I'm going to try to get as much information as I can on those other uh, in those other specialties. But I'm definitely going to be talking about oral surgery more than any of those. So if you guys have questions about your specific specialty, throw them down below and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. So the rest of this week, now that I have that test over with, is pretty relaxed. I have kind of a lot of lab stuff to do, but it shouldn't be a problem. Um, I'm going to be taking you guys along with me while I give you um, all the tips I have in case you are interested in specializing and kind of the roadmap that I'm going to take to try to get ready for some big tests that you have to take to even be considered for a residency. And I'll talk about some of the things that I'm going to be doing now to get ready to apply. Just woke up from a big old nap. Now I'm headed into lab to do some do some work. I got to do a all ceramic crown prep on tooth number eight, and then I have to mount the mandible onto an articulator. So I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So when a test doesn't go your way, you just need to relax. Get your mind off it and don't let it affect the rest of your week, uh, the rest of your day or the rest of your week because it can just have negative effects. Anyways, today didn't go my way, so I found my happy place. And I think the philosopher Gilmore Happy, don't quote me on that, uh, said that. So I'm in downtown Columbus, Scioto River, one of my favorite places to be. Check it out. So the main reason why I waited until now to do a video on this was really to take my the first year of dental school and prove to myself that I was actually going to be competitive um, and that I could actually apply and have a good chance of getting in. Now, I 100% know nothing is guaranteed right now. I know that past performance does not at all prove future performance, but 
I feel like I have a lot of confidence going into this summer semester and third year. So um, yeah, I kind of proved to myself that if I try hard enough, if school is my number one priority, I can definitely uh, make it as far as the grades go. And that leads me right into the first thing that I want to talk about when it comes to specializing. What are the requirements that schools or residencies look at when determining who they're going to accept for the residency and who they aren't? So when a residency program is evaluating and comparing one applicant to another, there are pretty much four things that they are going to look at. And I'm going to list them in what I think is the order of most importance but clearly I'm sure there's gonna be others that disagree but that from the research that I've done these are the most important things number one is GPA so that's basically what I've been doing this past year making sure that I've been doing as well as possible in all my classes to make sure my GPA is pretty high and number two is class rank so from all the research that I've been doing you want to make sure that you are in the top 25% anything out of that range it kind of takes you out of being super competitive and I don't really want to go into the application process um, not knowing for sure I mean you're gonna, never gonna know for sure but I want to give myself the best odds possible so um, just from what I've heard if you're in the top 25 you have a pretty good chance of getting some interviews and then you but you really want to shoot for that top 10% that will be kind of a highlight on your application and let the residency schools know that you're seriously dedicated. Number three is going to be a huge test called the CBSE. It's pretty similar to step one uh, that medical students have to take. So it's kind of just your basic science curriculum that you uh, learn in med school. And in dental school, we get a decent amount of it, but there's a lot of extra stuff, a lot of extra detail that um, I'm gonna have to learn and Get, prepare myself when I'm taking this test and I'll probably have a whole nother video about getting ready for this test I'm gonna talk a, a lot about it later on in the video but the CBSE is something that is a huge determining factor when it comes to applying now for a lot of pass-fail schools out there uh, across the US if you don't have your GPA or you don't have a class rank because all your classes are pass-fail that all that's gonna do is put more emphasis on these other few things that I'm gonna talk about and number four is going to be letters of recommendation. Now these can come from a few different people. So, and some residencies require multiple. So a good one uh, is gonna be from the dean of your school. So you want, you're gonna wanna start developing relationships with him or her, and then also faculty from the oral surgery res residency at your school. And sometimes your programs don't have these, so you might need to do an externship, go spend some time at a other program, getting to know faculty so that they can write a letter of recommendation for you. So once you have all of those four things submitted, you hopefully will get an interview. And when it's interview time, from what I understand, all of those numbers go out the window. You know, your grades and your GPA, um, your class rank, your test score, all they do is get your foot in the door. They qualify you for residency. So once it's time for an interview, really all they're looking at is who you are as a person. Are you gonna mesh well with the residents that they have there now, um, the faculty members that are gonna be teaching you for the next four or six years? So you kinda just have to be yourself and hope that you're not annoying to them and that they wanna actually spend all this time that they're about to invest into you for the next four to six years. And to qualify for most interviews, you're gonna wanna go on something called an externship. So this is where you contact a program that you're interested in and you go spend from anywhere from one to four weeks just pretty much shadowing. If you're a second year in your dental curriculum and you haven't really had any experience operating on real people, then most likely it's just gonna be a normal shadowing. So you're gonna go in there and you're just gonna watch. But if you're in your third or fourth year, and I'm not exactly sure what all you can do, but I know that if you're later on in your dental school career, then externships are really, really hands-on. You can get some valuable, valuable training from them. And during these externships, while you're spending a lot of time with the program, you kind of got to bring your A game because the residency is evaluating you, basically. They're going to have four weeks to determine whether you are the caliber of person that they want to represent them in their residency. So it's kind of a lot of pressure, but I don't really know that yet. And I'm actually not going to go on any internships uh, this second year because when I do take them, I want it to be one, a little bit closer to when I apply so that the programs can actually remember my face when they come across my application. And two, 
I want to be able to kind of get my hands dirty. I want to be able to do the extractions or do some of the small procedures that they let me. So those are the four things that residency programs are going to be looking for when they are evaluating your application and deciding whether or not they want to interview you. So the next thing that I'm going to talk about is what I'm doing and where I'm at right now in my own road of my application process. So I'm going to be walking you guys through what my plans are for this year and what I'm doing to make myself the best applicant when it, times, when it comes time to submit my application. I want to talk about what I'm actually doing right now in order to prepare myself to be able to apply in a couple years. So the first thing that I'm doing, first and foremost, is keeping up grades. And this is the most important thing that I can do. I can do some other small things that we'll talk about in a little bit, but grades, my GPA, and my class rank are of utmost importance right now. Um, for me and anyone who's in, pretty much anyone who's in your first or second year of dental school, grades will trump anything that you do. So I'm studying hard, making sure that I'm not slipping. Um, even though I have two pretty good semesters under my belt, I do not want to get lazy or complacent. So we're gonna keep grinding on trying to keep those grades as high as possible. One of the other things that I'm doing right now, I'm making a game plan for when I'm going to take the CBSC. So that big test I talked about that will compare me to all of the other uh, applicants that are applying to these residencies. It's pretty much the first part of boards for medical students. I'm planning on taking a, they offer it twice a year, so one in August and one in February, I believe, if my information isn't incorrect. So I'm gonna take a dry run, kind of a practice run this February. I'm gonna set aside about a month uh, for studying. I'll probably study uh, a couple hours a day, nothing too heavy, but I want to go into the test just to get a feel for the difficulty, for the types of questions that they ask, get comfortable with the timing, how fast I need to be answering these questions. And I think that will make me feel a lot more comfortable for when I take it for real in August. It's going to be tough doing all of this at the same time as staying up with my dental grades and um, dental clinic, because by then that summer will be seeing real patients. So that all that's gonna be tough and it's just part of the grind and the dedication that you, ha you have to have going into um, a residency that is as competitive as oral surgery is. And the last thing that I'm doing right now is I'm trying to get involved here at OSU with the oral surgery department. So yesterday I actually went in and shadowed a first year resident. He was extracting eight teeth from a pretty young kid. So these teeth were, they were being removed for orthodontic purposes and the resident was kind of walking me through what he was doing, why he was using certain tools, which way they're applying the forces so that the teeth will come out without breaking the roots. And the assistant that was there was also just trying to teach me as much as possible, answer any questions that I had. So it was a really awesome experience. If you guys have an oral surgery department at your school, I highly recommend going in there and basically getting as much experience as you can with the surgeries that are typical for OMFS. Also, it's really important to kind of get some face time with some of the faculty that are in uh, the residency. So if when it comes time to apply, they actually know who you are if you want to apply to the, to the residency program that is at your school. So for the next couple years, I'm gonna be spending as much time, a lot of my extra free time, I'm gonna be in uh, shadowing, getting to know the residents, getting to know the faculty. I'm gonna try to get involved in some research, but I haven't been able to do that yet. Um, mostly just me being lazy. I will probably do it within the next couple months here. But that is all that I'm doing. And I'm so excited for all of the long hours I have ahead of me. I know it sounds kind of weird, but it's gonna be such a uh, fulfilling experience when it's all over with. And I understand completely that there's no guarantees. This is such one of the most competitive residencies that there is after dental school. So if I don't bring my A game to pretty much every test, every lab procedure that we do, you know, I have a chance of falling out of being a competitive applicant. So from here on out for the next couple of years, it's gonna be a pretty rough road, but I think it's definitely gonna be worth it. Being able to do these huge surgeries that have such a huge impact on people's lives, I think is amazing. Being able to wake up and go into my office or go into the hospital and pretty much save lives, I think there's no amount of hard work that would want that would deter me from being able to do that. So I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride. Hopefully it all works out. Um, we'll see, and we got a couple years before match day, but it's something that I'm 
anxiously looking forward to. So I hope you guys liked the video. If you have any questions about uh, oral surgery or if you guys want me to talk about any other specialties, uh, I don't have a lot of experience, but I'm kind of getting to know things outside of oral surgery. So put them down in the comments and I will see you guys in the next one.